Well, welcome back to more climbing techniques, friends. This video is gonna take a look at some updates that I've been applying to my own climbing techniques, some improvements I've made, and some new techniques uh, that we didn't go over last time. So this time I wanna start out by looking at something called the basic footlock. And what this does is it builds on the Prusik system that I taught in the last video, but it allows you to be a little more efficient because rather than two Prusik knots and your climb, you only need to use one. And the way we do this is we take a technique from aerial circus arts of all things. It's a technique from arts like aerial silks, lira, and trapeze. And we apply it to climbing because it works great. So that's the first thing we're going to take a look at, the basic footlock. So the basic footlock allows you to stand on a rope with just one foot. So to perform it, you're going to put the rope in between your two feet. And you're going to take one foot starting from the outside of the rope and looping around the inside like so. And at this point, you're going to loop it around again, but you have to make sure it stays above your heel. If it goes below the heel, this technique won't work. So you're going to loop it around again, like so. And at this point, it should be kind of like a bracelet around your ankle. And at this point, you're just going to lift your foot up. And notice there's, a, there's some stray rope at the end at the back here. You're going to take that spare rope and step on it with your heel. And at this point, the rope can hold your entire weight. You can step up like so. So we begin the climb like usual, and after we've thrown our grappling hook or our loops rope or whatever we're using, we want to always do a weight test to make sure that our anchor is solid. And then we tie our prusik after that, and we want to make sure again that our prusik will hold our weight as well, because sometimes prusik knots are a little unpredictable at first, but if you test them once and they hold, then you can trust them after that. And then rather than applying a second prusik, this is when the footlock comes in. We can tie the footlock around whichever foot we choose. And you can even change feet if you're going on a really long climb. Now notice I don't have to untie the footlock after every single step. All I have to do is take up the slack in the loose rope hanging down below my foot. So this makes the climb much quicker than it would be with using two prusiks. Once I get to the top, course and make sure I'm I make sure I have a good hold and then I can release the grappling hook from whatever it was anchored on lower it down slowly in the interest of taking care of your equipment and not making too much noise and then if it's not too high you can jump down and if it is too high you can rappel down all right next I want to take a look at another new climbing method that I kind of stumbled upon and I've become quite fond of now the reason I like this method so much is all you need is a harness, a carabiner, and a rope. This method takes a little bit of strength, but not as much as it looks like. And what we're going to do is we're going to hook our carabiner to the rope itself. So this end right here with the figure eight knot is the end that typically the grappling hook would go on. But now instead we're hooking it to our harness. And all we're going to do is we're going to throw the excess rope over our anchor point, let the excess come back down, and then pull ourselves up. So let's check it out. So we begin by throwing the rope over an anchor point. And the rope has to be approximately twice as long as the height we're climbing, since it has to loop up and back down over the anchor point, and we still have to be able to reach it. Now, of course, the knot that you use around your harness is very important. I'm using a standard figure eight climbing knot, and that's what I would recommend above any other knot that I've found. So you just grab the rope, and you start climbing, you pull yourself up. Now, you know, I guess it may be obvious that if you're not able to do pull-ups that this climbing method may not be for you. But I will say that it's not as hard as you might think. It's not quite as hard as just doing straight pull-ups because, at least in the case of trees, the bites, the friction created by the branches on the rope helps hold you up. So it's not like I'm about to slip and fall at any moment. I don't have to work quite as hard as you might think. Uh, I haven't tried this method on metal surfaces from rooftops, etc. yet, so I can't really speak for that, but I can say that if you're using it for any kind of tree climbing, that it's not near as hard as it looks. Now notice at the end of the climb here, I demonstrate an alternative method if you're unable to do pull-ups. You can use the same basic footlock we just learned, and you can use that to help pull yourself up. You still have to be able to hold yourself, and it's much slower, but you don't have to pull up with your arms if you use the basic footlock. After I'm done, when I'm ready to rappel down, I simply throw the rope over a higher anchor point, get a good hold of it, and lift myself up while I'm still in the tree to make sure it'll hold me. 
and then I just shimmy to the outside of the tree and slowly lower myself. So since my last video on ninjutsu climbing, I dropped a little bit of money and got some actual climbing rope, right? What a concept. Um, the previous rope I had was advertised as climbing rope, but it was much thinner than this. This is kind of a standard climbing rope, so uh, I feel a lot more safe now. A few notes about rope. Um, there's different types of climbing rope. There's what's called static rope, which is what this is. And it's really good for actual climbing because it doesn't have a lot of give. It's not going to stretch with you. Uh, that said, if you're doing some kind of repelling, sometimes it's nice to have some give. So it just depends on what your purpose is. But for my purposes, the static rope was nice. I want to talk a little bit about rope care as far as I understand it. I'm not an expert, but I wanted to share what I know. In general, you want to keep your rope stored dry and clean. Over time, moisture and dirt can kind of damage your rope, so it's good to keep it clean and dry and take care of it. Now, in regards to how you should store your rope, um, I like to fold it in a very efficient way that I'm going to demonstrate here. You know, it, there's nothing that will drive you crazy like these knots that somehow magically create themselves when you put your rope up if you don't fold it properly. So, first I'm going to find both ends of the rope. Here's one right here, and the other end has the figure eight knot in it. Now, I have just been leaving this figure eight knot in the rope just because it takes a while to get it quite right and I see no reason to untie it. So here's what I'm gonna do. You can, you can just roll it up on your arm like this. I've had kind of bad luck with doing that. What you wanna avoid is these kinks right here. You wanna undo any of those kinks you find um, for various reasons. They can damage the rope and they can uh, make it harder to, to be efficient with folding it up. So once you get it uh, started like so, you want to take the remaining rope, and it takes a while to learn how to estimate about how much you need to do this, but you're just going to pinch it in the middle there and take your remaining rope and start to wrap it really snug around the entire bundle like that. It's good to give it a tug every now and then to make sure you're staying really tight. And then once you get to the end of it, Put your finger there, and then put the end of it, put the end of the rope underneath that last loop, and snug it up real good. And you've got a nice bundle here that's very efficient, easy to throw in a bag and go. It's well taken care of. It's not going to get tangled up, and it's not going to get in your way. I want to talk a little bit about coiling rope effectively, so that you can use it to throw to someone in an emergency situation, such as a drowning. So the last thing you want to happen is to see your buddy drowning out there and you pick up your rope and it looks like that and you're like I'll save you and you throw it to him and this happens. Not good. So how do we avoid that? Well it's all about how you coil the rope because we don't want knots in the rope. So really it's kind of like if, you, if you're a musician it's kind of like rolling a guitar cable or rolling a microphone cable correctly so that it doesn't it's kind of like rolling a microphone or a guitar cable so that it doesn't damage the wiring inside. You just have to follow the rope and prevent kinks and prevent looping. So we're going to take the end of it here and as I, as I bring the loop across, I'm going to rotate my wrist and that's going to help it lay straight like so. And we just want to make sure that it lays straight the whole time and there's no none of this and there's no kinking. I'll show you what I mean by kinking. Kinking is if there's a loop in the rope down here and you pull it up and that, it looks like that. You want to avoid that. So we're going to make sure it's free of kinks. And also, try your best to make sure that it doesn't cross itself up here. And if you can do those three or four things, you should have much better luck. So let's try again. Our buddy is back there drowning. We've properly coiled our rope and we're going to throw it to him. So that time we got the full use of the rope. And that's what we want to make sure. So coiling rope is something that you really need experience in. You can't really learn it just by theory. It's something you have to practice. So I recommend you do practice it in case you ever find yourself in a situation. And practice doing it quickly too, so that you can throw it without having to spend several minutes coiling it up in an emergency situation. So I want to talk about free climbing for a minute. And by free climbing, I mean climbing without the use of a climbing harness or a rope or a grappling hook or anything like that. You may not ever plan on doing free climbing or it might be something you're into, but you may find yourself in an emergency situation that calls for a good climber someday 
and you don't have all your gear or you don't have time to go get it. So you may end up having to do that. So it's important to have at least thought about it. So I'm just gonna give a quick example of improvising a way to climb this tree right here, just using what happens to be around me. And I didn't go and grab what I'm gonna use. It just happened to be laying here because it's used for something else. And I was like, I wonder if I could climb that tree. So I'm gonna demonstrate it here. Um, so I'm gonna demonstrate it here by climbing this tree, just using a little board that's laying down there. So here we go. So far on our study of climbing, all we've done is vertical travel. We've only traveled up and we've traveled down. So now I want to take a few minutes and look at a portable zip line system that I'm kind of working on and, and I want to show you what I've got. And I would love some tips because it's not perfect. But the general idea is first you get up to wherever you're going and then you need to travel horizontally to another high area. And so you loop the rope around an anchor point where you are. You don't tie it, you just loop it. And then you tie both ends to either your grappling hook or a knot or whatever you're using to connect to your anchor on the other side. And you throw the anchor across, you attach your carabiner to it, and you travel across zipline style. And once you get to the other side, because you didn't have any knots on the side you came from, you can just untie the knots on the side you're on and pull the rope and keep moving. So that way you don't have to leave any equipment behind. You can keep the rope that you used. So we're gonna take a look at a demo of that and I'll explain some kinks and some things that can go wrong. And if you have any pointers for me, I'd love to hear some advice on how to improve it because it's not a perfect system. All right, so first you get up the tree or whatever you're climbing, however you wish. You can use a method that we've taught in this series or you can use a ladder. There's plenty of ways you can do it. Um, once you get up there, the first thing you'll do is you'll get out your rope and you can see how tedious just that process can be when you're dealing with over a hundred feet of rope because remember you need at least twice the length of rope of the length that you're traveling right because you're looping the rope across an anchor point at its halfway point and both ends of the rope are going to end up on the side that your grappling hook or other anchor travels to so i got a little tangled up here i was fighting it and finally got it untangled and that rope that i used for this the only time it comes out is when I'm using it for the zip line because it's so long for everything else. In that particular rope, I have a figure eight knot on each end. Since the only thing I use it for is zip lining, I just attach each figure eight end to the carabiner attached to my grappling hook. And then it's quick and ready to go. Probably the area of this technique that needs the most work is cinching the rope because obviously unless you just happen to have the perfect length of rope once you throw it you're gonna have to tighten it or otherwise your rope is gonna droop almost all the way to the ground if not all the way to the ground and that's too dangerous for you to trust for a zip line and plus it will be somewhat useless because you just fall to the ground and then have to climb up the rope to the other side so the idea is to get the rope as taut as possible but you have to do that within the context of it being looped around an anchor point and thrown to the other end. So you don't have either end to work with. All you have is a stretch of rope. And the only way I've figured out how to do this is just to tie a few overhand knots in the rope and cinch it up as you go that way and make sure that the, the knots are behind the area where you're gonna be zip lining so you don't have to deal with them when you're out there on the zip line. I'm sure there's a better way to do this. I just haven't figured it out yet. So if anyone is familiar with a method similar to this and they know a better way to do it, feel free to comment below and let me know. So once we have the rope untangled, we've successfully thrown our anchor to the other side and we have it taut. Ideally, you want to test it with your body weight before you leave whatever high point you're on. Here, I didn't have the luxury of doing that. However, I've done this in this area before, so I know that it's somewhat safe. But obviously, you don't want to just uh, free fall, essentially. You want to you want to test it before you're in severe danger. It's a scary moment even if you have tested it, dropping off that ledge. 
into the unknown. <laughs> so you get over here, and unless you have a method much better than mine, then once you get toward the end of it, you're going to find that the rope wasn't quite as taut as you originally thought. So what I do in that situation is I make a prussic. Our old friend the prussic knot comes in handy again here. And I tie it in front of the carabiner that is attached to the rope. So that way as I pull myself up, the carabiner moves the prussic. But then as the carabiner slides back with my body weight and gravity, the prussic catches it. So it's kind of a way of inching yourself forward. It's quite convenient and pretty quick. And of course the end of the climb is always the hardest. That's my experience at least. It's hard to, to make the transition from being on the rope to making your way to the destination that you originally wanted to get to. So once you get up there, you can get comfortable and make sure you're stable before you unhook yourself from the grappling hook. Once you're stable, you can release one of the figure eight knots from the carabiner and, and pull the rope to the side that you're on now. Now this brings up a really important point, and that is how you tie those knots that you tied to make the rope more taut. And that's assuming you had to do that because you don't know a better method than what I'm showing here. If you do, that's fantastic. But I've made this mistake a couple of times and it's very frustrating. If you tie the knots with both of the ropes, because notice there's two rope lines throughout this whole system. If you tie the knots around both both ropes, then you're going to be unable to pull the rope back to you because the knots have tied into a loop and you're unable to pull past that loop. So it's very important that you only grab one strand of the rope and you tie the knots only in that strand. So that way when you pull it across, as I'm showing here, it can actually make it all the way back to you. This is just a method of getting down that I've ended up using a lot lately because it's kind of handy if it's not too high for you to jump. You can put your backpack on your front, which both helps protect the gear and allows you to roll because your back is free. It's hard to roll with a backpack on your back. So I put it on my front and get a hold of it with one hand to make sure that it's not going to fall. And then as I jump down and I do a little roll to help lessen the impact, I'm able to do so because the backpack is on my front.